There are four key categories of technologies, all of which are improving by double-digit, maybe triple-digit basis every year. Each one of them is disruptive in its own way, but they enable one another, and when combined with one another, they create a virtuous cycle of disruption. Right? So what's an even bigger disruption? Um, Self-driving cars. So let me show you. I'm sure you've seen some sort of video for self-driving. Um, self-driving is not in the future. It's already here. I mean, we have hundreds of self-driving cars on the road. And Google's cars don't even have steering wheel. No steering wheels or pedals. I mean, they actually drive themselves. Uh, and they're being tested in cities, not just on highways. Uh, and a lot of large uh, conventional car companies are investing so heavily in, in self-driving. A lot of them have announced, you know, level four, which is no humans needed at any time, automation by essentially 2018 to 2020. Tesla uh, says that they're already 90% self-driving uh, and they'll be fully self-driving by uh, 2018 in two years. Uh, Nissan will also be by 2018 or 2020 fully self-driving, right? No humans needed. Now, when is you know, this disruption going to happen, and how is it going to change everything, automation? So I'll give you two data points as to how quickly the technology cost curve is going for the essential technologies for self-driving. Uh, this is what an autonomous car sees uh, when it uses a sensor called LiDAR. LiDAR is like a laser and radar, so you emit, it emits about a million laser pulses 100 meters out, 360 degrees per second. A million laser pulses per second that bounce back, and then you have a supercomputer in the trunk that crunches up all that data and decides, oh, this is a cat, this is a tree, and so on and so forth, right? Um, in 2012, when Google announced the cost of its, uh, the technology costs, of its self-driving car, LiDAR was $70,000. This is 2012. By 2013, um, the, the next-gen LiDAR was $10,000. By 2014, the CEO of a Silicon Valley company said in my class, um, yeah, I mean, we're making a $1,000 LiDAR. From 70,000 to 1,000 inside of two or three years. But wait, there's more, right? Um, that same company announced in January a $250 solid state LiDAR that is going to go to market this year. From $70,000 to 250 in five years, right? You want more? The next generation is going to cost 90 dollars, and it's going to be the size of a postage stamp. You'll be able to use it on your iPhone. I mean, I don't know what you're going to use it for, but you'll be able to do that, right? So this is how exponential technologies are affecting the cost of self-driving. And again, uh, essentially what self-driving cars are are computers on wheels. And so what's driving this computer? Uh, wh wh what's the actual computer? Well, let me show you how that technology has evolved in terms of cost. This was the world's most powerful supercomputer in the year 2000. It was a one teraflops computer, the size of that room, and it cost almost $50 million. One teraflops, one trillion floating point operations per second, whatever that means, right? Um, so the... Last year, NVIDIA announced its two teraflop GPU for 50 bucks. Should I say that again? From 50 million to 50 dollars in about 16 years. And actually, they announced the latest generation uh, this last uh, January, eight teraflops. Basically, it's going to be a supercomputer the size of a little lunchbox, right, that you can put in your car. And it also includes self-driving car technology, I mean, deep learning technology, uh, for a few hundred bucks. So, now, is the market ready? The technology is ready. Is the market ready? So, my old company, Cisco Systems, did a study around the world, and here's what they found out. 
In countries like Brazil, 95% of consumers are saying, yep, bring it on right now, sight unseen. In places like China and India and so on, they're ready. Countries with about half the world's population are ready to leapfrog the existing system of transportation. Why? Here's why. Okay, if you've driven in any of these places, that probably explains why. Um, so, okay, so it's cool. We'll be able to do Facebook and Twitter and email and who knows what else while we not drive. That is very cool, but is it disruptive? Let me tell you how disruptive it is. Car as a service. So I said before that I don't own a car. I have not owned a car in eight or nine years. That's my car, okay? This is my car. So I use car as a service, and that's what I use, right? And I'll show you two of the things that I do use on a basically daily basis, Uber or Lyft, essentially. Um, and I, I'm not going to tell you much about it except this. In San Francisco, 50% of Uber rides are carpools. Now, what's a carpool? Essentially, if I'm going from A to B, basically Uber says, hey, if we pick up somebody on the way, you get 40%, 50% off. How about that? Cool. 50% of folks are saying, yeah, I'll do that. Is that because we're more social? Maybe. But, you know, we do, you know, price signals are very important, right? So another data point is that we spend a lot of money buying a car, and yet we keep them parked 96% of the time. The parking space uh, is actually more expensive than the car itself, right? Which makes no sense from a societal basis. So to pay all that money, the average American spends $12,000 a year total cost of car ownership to use it 4% of the time. I mean, show me an industry with 4% asset utilization, and I'll show you a disruption waiting to happen. Uh, and in fact, by the way, 40% of that time, we're looking for parking. Um, so that 4% that, that asset utilization is actually less than 3%. Um, so essentially, what is going to happen, the disruption that is going to be enabled by self-driving cars, plus car sharing, plus car as a service, is an efficiency disruption. Is using the car, instead of using it 4% of the time, we're going to be using it 80 or 90% or 60%, choose your number, right? So that's an efficiency disruption. So when we converge on that, essentially here's what you need to know. Uber is working on its own self-driving car. Now, they may or may not actually go to market with it, but that is their goal. Their goal is to make the whole concept of car ownership obsolete. Essentially, to give the same, and, and it's not necessarily going to be Uber, but it's going to be the concept of car as a service together with self-driving car, which is going to take the 4% asset utilization up to 60 or 80%. Uh, car ownership goes away. Why? Uh, and GM is already doing that. Like I said, they, they put 500 million into Lyft, and also they just bought a billion dollar uh, self-driving uh, technology company, and essentially they're starting to pilot all this combination. EV plus self-driving plus car sharing. Those are the three dimensions of the disruption of transportation. And when this happens, the cost on a per kilometer basis is going to be 90% less for us not to own a car for the same level of service. So, Take a look at how much you pay for your car. The average American spends 12,000 a year for 12,000 miles, essentially, if we can get the same level of service without owning a car for $1,200. Essentially, that means we're going to keep $11,000 in our pocket. Okay? Every one who owns a car is going to keep $11,000 in the, in the pocket. So combine that, and what happens when we go from all parking to all driving is what else? Parking is going to be obsolete. So 90% of parking spaces, especially in the cities, which is pretty expensive, gone. 
because these cars are going to be riding around all the time instead of being parked all the time. And that's why utilization will go up. Parking is going to be obsolete, right? We're not going to need that many parking spaces. Cost per mile per kilometer is going to be 10 times cheaper, which means that the concept of car ownership itself is going to be obsolete. Um, we're going to have 80, the car fleet is going to be 80% smaller because it's going to be riding around all the time. Um, and boom. So these are the three dimensions of the transportation disruption. We're going to go from all ICE to all EV, from human driven to computer driven, from ownership to car sharing. And when you put that together, essentially this is what the disruption is going to be. By 2030, all cars will be, all vehicles, buses, vans, tractors, you name it, will be electric, self-driving, and car shared. And by 2030, it's going to be over. And this is not in the future. This is happening right now as we speak. Thank you.